Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So two weeks ago, I put up a video showing my Quest 2 settings. And in that time, some things have changed, some things haven't worked, and we've got quite a few errors. So this video is just gonna cover what's causing that and how you can fix it on your own side. So I wanna start by saying a, like a shout out to the Discord group because everybody worked together to solve this and we were able to figure it out quite fast, which is quite nice. So I'm going to cover what you need to do to start Oculus Quest development because a lot of people join these videos and then follow the, the settings and then it still doesn't work. And the reason for that is you need Android Studio installed. So I'll link a video in the description which shows you how to set that up for the Quest. And after that, you should be pretty much good to go. There may be a set or two missing in here regarding the Quest 2, but that's because I'm using the source control version provided by Oculus through GitHub. If you want that, I'll leave another link in the description which you can follow along to get this version. But apart from that, all of this should work and we should be good to go. And it will also stop a common issue of level loading and level streaming, which is causing a crash in people's projects. So we'll go through it. So Going to start same as normal through maps and modes. Set up my motion controller map. I'm using an existing project that I've been working on, so I'm going to try and set up Quest multiplayer in the future. So we'll see how that goes. So I've got these and then packaging. You're always going to want to remember to select the list of maps to include in the package. And you do that by cook only maps. Made that enabled. And then I'd also do exclude editor content and movie files when staging. Just reduce the size a bit. Support platform, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's still Android, obviously. And then target hardware. When I set up the project, I always do mobile tablet and then scalable 3D or 2D. This just allows us to change this in the future using project settings and basically in the rendering tab, which is where we're gonna go next. So in rendering, I have it set up to mobile MSA four times. Any higher than this, we see some stuttering. So kind of leave it like that. I normally use legacy shader model, but we don't really need to anymore, which is pretty good. Uh, if we scroll down, if you're trying to keep performance down, I'd recommend reflection capture resolution as well, changing that to 64, just half it a little bit. And then forward shading is what you're gonna need. So no forward shading just allows us to opt in and out of certain features within the material editor, which is, and then if we keep going, this is all set up as normal, so this will be default. And the aliasing method, we can change this to MSAA because we're using forward rendering, which works a little bit easier. Now, if we keep going, I actually have mine set to instant stereo enabled and mobile HDR. This allows me to use stuff like Bloom, um, better reflections, ambient occlusion, that kind of thing. It does push your CPU on the headset quite a bit, so keep that in mind. It's not very good for performance, but you do get a little better, better quality and some nicer looking content out of it, which is pretty good. So if we keep going down on the left, we will get to the important part, which is Android. So we scroll up to the top. You're going to want to accept the SDK license. So this is where I was saying that you need to install Android Studios. If you don't have this, you won't be able to do this step and you will struggle to build to the headset. So I'll leave the links in the description where I just go over how you can do that and how to set it all up correctly, which is really cool. And then we're going to go through package game inside data, package game data inside .apk, and then make that true. We're going to keep going. And this is where we get to the settings that make the difference. So in my last video, I used support ARM64. I was wrong. Should have checked it. And what we actually need to do is use ARM v7. So this will actually stop us from crashing and getting an absolute load of errors, which has just popped up with the new version essentially. But I haven't had a chance to try this with the original Quest, but I do believe these should actually work for both as well. So I've got ARM v7 enabled and then support Vulkan as well. I get a lot of questions, which is, should you use OpenGL or Vulkan? It's kind of up to you. I prefer using bulking because it's a little bit better and it's the more experimental up-to-date version. 
and it's just going to get better over time. So that's why I use Vulkan. The next step is to go to Package for Oculus Mobile Devices. And in here on the drop down, you're going to want to select Oculus Quest. So this is something that people have been missing. And this is because it seems to only be available in the source version at the minute. So 4.25.3 is what I'm using. And it only seems to be here. So if you're missing this, just try and do an Oculus Quest build. It should be fine. It's basically the same sort of stuff, but it just lets it know what we're actually using. So that's it for the Android settings. Uh, Android Studio, I just make sure we've got these set up correctly. If you follow the setup for Android Studio, you'll get all this done, which will be absolutely great. And then the last step is to go to Oculus VR. So in here, I normally just basically turn most of it on. So auto enable splash screens, enable color specific gamut. And then here we can actually select which headset we're using. So I'm using the Quest. So I use that, just makes colors a little bit better. We kind of see it quite a bit in whites. So they used to be yellow on the headset and using this helps that quite a bit. So don't need the PC stuff, uh, mobile CPU levels. I leave this at two and three. You can push this to four, I believe, but I'd recommend not doing that. Just leaving it at default. Force fulvated rendering is set to low. That's how I usually like it. Cause you can't really tell too much around the sides and it works pretty well. So we've got that and then we have FFR dynamic. So I believe this doesn't work too well at the minute, but I am aware that they're doing updates, which is going to cause the headset to predict this itself. So this might actually disappear in the future because it might actually be built into the device itself. So I'd enable that chroma correction. We're going to have that on just stops the blurry effect around colors and then reset the HMD with controller. It's fine. I think some of these are enabled by default. I've done it so many times. I just go through and just tick everything requires system keyboard. So in this case, I'm actually working on a project which requires key input. So I'm using the main menu. So I've actually enabled requires system keyboard on tick. So I can actually access that in the project hand tracking support. I do controllers only not really into the hand tracking. Don't like it that much, but you can actually switch this to hands only. I do believe there's some issues when you do this. But there is an example content in the source code version, which actually up, like runs pretty well. So there's that. And then late latching to improve controller tracking, which is what it is. Multi-view. Yep. So multi-view and Vulkan has to be enabled, which we have, which is excellent. And now that's pretty much it for building to the Quest 2. What I do want to say though is if you're doing this to an existing project, which you've built to the headset and had different settings. Once you change the arm V, so if I go back to Android and you change arm 64 to arm V7, chances are when you build, you may get some errors. And every time I've done it, there've been three errors saying device can't be found and can't remember what the other two are, but they're pretty close together. And basically that's just some issue with your end files. So so the actual project files not updating and to do that, literally if you right click on a folder in your content browser, and you go show in Explorer, we can actually go to, in my case, it's multiplayer test. It's what I'm working in. And in here you can select binaries, build, derive data cache, intermediate and saved, and you can delete all of these. So let's actually do that. So, you know, it'll work. So we'll hit quit. And then we can delete these files. You can see it's quite a decent size. Click continue. Uh, for some reason, it's allowing me to delete the intermediate, but that's fine. And then you can actually just double click your quest project again and it'll open up. And now if you do a rebuild, it will take a little bit longer because it's removed the build data that we already had. And this usually takes me about 10 or 15 minutes. So if we do project launcher and then we go to advanced, same as normal, Android ASTC, and then buy the book just to improve build times. 
we can hit launch. And then this will take about 10 minutes, but we'll come back once it's done. So we're back. This didn't actually take me that long. I think it's because it didn't fully delete my intermediate file, which is pretty good. But as you see, we've got no errors. Uh, I get a lot. I get asked a lot when you can actually try the headset on. And when it says launching on Android, you can do that now. So we can actually pick up the headset. You won't be able to see in it because I haven't got it set up, but I can build and I'm actually in the project, which is exactly what we want. And if you keep an eye on the actual launching Android stuff, it won't actually finish until we actually close down the application within the headset. So as soon as I press quit, it'll actually take a second. You see, we get a load of errors. But all this is basically saying is we got 193 errors because the headset hung and it's not too sure. It's basically just closing the application and the headset's like, oh, it froze for a second. But we can actually ignore all of this because it's all working absolutely fine. And you can see UAT post launch cleanup when it's done. And then if we do actually open up source code, so we'll just keep going for a little bit, go in a little bit more detail. I'll open up SideQuest and we'll actually jump into the headset so we can see. So we're in the headset. It's pretty difficult to see because of the way SideQuest is loading it. So we'll hold it like that. I'm going to try and do this without seeing it. So we go down and then we actually select our little apps. We can now go to unknown sources and we can see our quest multiplayer project. It takes a second to load, but we're basically in and we can actually still do everything we want. So that's how you can use the new settings to load it. And while I'm here, actually, just to prove that it works, I actually have the trigger set up to load a new level. So if we hit right trigger, it actually loads and it doesn't crash. So this is just one way to fix the issues. And that's pretty much covering the Quest 2. A little bit more detail than what I went in before. This time it works. So I do apologize about that. But this is a big shout out to my Discord community. The link's in the description. You can see it just over there. Still trying to get this camera thing right. So you see it just over in the middle at the bottom. That's the link. There is also one in the description if you want to head on over. So that's pretty much it. Just a, a shout out to the Discord community for figuring this all out. It took us a few days, but with a load of input, we got it working. And that's pretty much it. So until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.